All right, people. All right, people. Welcome back. Real Tough Talk. Second games we're going to jump into right now is going to be DG Demgettis versus Untouchables. Now, DG is coming in over the loss to the Monarchs 21-20. And um, Untouchables coming in over a win, beating LES 27-24. But the big matchup here is Corey versus Chuck. Two former UFL League MVPs going off against each other, which is awesome. You got um, Ricky on Untouchables who played with Chuck, um, with, with Carver. Um, Avido played with Chuck on Carver. So, you know, you got things like that. You got Slutty and Randy who play with Corey on YMM. So it's like the battle of guys who know each other, teammates, however you want to say it. But at the end of the day, this is a possible two of the top teams in the league. Now, the question is, we've seen DG come off of a loss and Chuck threw three interceptions. We've seen Untouchables win the game, but their defense gave up 24 points. So what do you think is the most concern on what team, on what side, to you? Uh, my thing is, I'm concerned with, at least coming out of the gate with the, their first game, Untouchables defense. Because not to take anything away from the Raiders, but their defense was giving up a lot of points a little too easily. And I think that that's the main issue with, with either team. I think that DG does have problems. They're not perfect, but they weren't. Um, my thing in the last game, the main issue that they had was pass protection. But they had one of the best rushers in the league in Damo rushing every down. So that's one problem that many teams may have facing that team in the Monarchs. But right here, I think that the Untouchables defense is more of a problem that they have to focus on rather than anything that DG has to deal with right now. I thought Untouchables should be using Ricky to blitz because mm -hmm. we've, seen we've seen DG struggle with Damo. So I thought Ricky should be started on defense because Ricky can't play in the space and he can't pressure the quarterback. Yeah. But we'll have to see how they do that. We're going to see Untouchables, all three of their picks here. And on the other side, DG will have Chuck and Slutty both here. So all the picks are here. We have to jump into the game and see what happens. We're going to jump in with DG getting the ball first. After Chuck, we're blocking from dirt, goes to track, in the gap, low, but still call for a decent game. I think track kind of doesn't get enough credit for his offensive side of the ball. He can play defense, but the guy has a lot of speed and he can't catch the football. Good catch there. Chuck on four rush, throws a track, open in the gap, get him to the three yard line. Hove is gonna leave him and he's gonna get open in the last second. Hove is coming from Bama. So this is a good pickup for this untouchable team. Hove is known as a defensive captain on that team. So that's definitely an upgrade and an addition to this untouchable team. Third to go, Chuck finds Bones in the back of the end zone. For the touchdown, Bones is gonna get the extra point. Seven nothing. DG takes the lead. And if you look here, on this last touchdown play, Andy gets picked by Buck. So he gets picked by his own man to leave Bones wide open. This is the worst case scenario for your defense. That your man, your own defender, it, um, your own teammate is getting in your way on your route to the, to the, um, to the receiver. Unfortunately, that's exactly what happened with Andy and Bones is left open for the touchdown. So right away, you see issues with their team's defense. You see Hove leaving track wide open on this play at the last second. Stick with him one more one more second, and um, Chuck is under pressure. He has to find a way to find another option. That, and then in the, in the red zone, to bump it to your own player on defense is the worst thing that could ever happen, and they give up some um, seven points easy. I remember DG, did, they lost Bones last season, got injured. Mm -hmm. So now he's back, and he's shown why he's important to this offensive tackle. 7-0 DG, and Touchables get the ball. Corey throws the BG, open on the sideline for a nice game, get him to the three-yard line in the first down. Buck is called for a flag for holding, which is going to push him back. They went crazy. Avado went crazy. We're going to hear him going crazy a lot this game, which is something we're going to address at the end of the game. But he goes crazy. Buck didn't hold him. Buck said he didn't hold him. That's a bad call. What do you think of the call? And... Let me see. Is it hard? It's right, plain as day on the camera. There is no question. Buck held the um, Buck held on on this play. If you look here, 
He's put, just look at it. It's plain as day. This is a hole. Unfortunately, they didn't see it. So they figured that, oh, the ref made a bad call. That's crazy. Alvaro argues this play two plays later. You're going to see that later. This is going to be a running theme for this team right now. Corey then with two short passes getting to the five yard line. And Alvaro, if you look here, he's arguing still on the holding two plays later. You see him here arguing. Still going crazy over that play, even though they're, 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 Corey just started moving the ball. Third and goal, Corey finds BG in the end zone for the touchdown. Dirt is going to get the sack on extra point. 7-6, Untouchables come back into the game, trailing one. And with all of these problems that, the, that um, Untouchables are dealing with, one thing that's definitely not a problem is Corey getting into the, red, into the end zone. And that's why you could say, you know what? That's the smartest thing that this team has ever done to pick up Corey. Much needed a quarterback for this team, and now they are a team that is able to score almost at will. Now, are their defense going to be a, a, a part of them that's going to make their job that much harder? That's a wait and see issue. But right now, Corey's able to get them into the, into the, into the end zone for its first score. Chuck gets the ball back. On four runs, she's going to throw the ring in the middle for a decent game, picking up the first down. Chuck upgraded this offense when we had last year. Randy, Bones, you know, they, this, this, this is definitely a great slutty. So he has a lot more weapons on the team. And we haven't really talked about West this season. Yeah. Play game one, we, listen, Chuck has a lot more upgraded offense. Chuck is gonna throw deep to Bones, who has a step on BG in the gap, caught in the back of the end zone for the touchdown. Slutty gets a two point conversion, 15-6, DG. If you look here, as uh, Bones cuts inside. Right as he about to cut on the outside, Chuck throws the ball. Now the receiver has a, uh, has the option to has the opportunity to go and get the ball before the defense is able to react. So Chuck is able to understand this. He has experience doing this. It's so easy for them, and that makes it much harder for the defense to defend. Unfortunately, BG, he's one of those guys that got caught. So it's 15-6, DG. Corby gets the ball back on first down, throws deep to Juju, open in the gap, caught in the end zone for the touchdown. DG gets the two point conversion, 15, 14, DG, but untouchables have got right back in the game. If you look here, Randy gets caught as Juju fakes short and goes deep. Randy is the reigning defensive player of the year. Are you sure about that? It look like that here. Corey went right after him. Why? Because Randy plays on YMM. Corey knows what Randy likes to do, and he knew how to go after him. Juju is a very underrated player, and he makes Randy the former defense player here, because we have to take the title away a little bit for this play <laughs> and catch some in the end zone. That's a touchdown, 15-14. And this is just one -on -one, a one-on-one -on -one route where he's able to get beat. As soon as he stops in, he, he cuts inside looking like he's about to get a short play, and then he fakes and goes deep. By the time he reacts, Juju's already 20 yards downfield, and the ball is already in the air for him to run into the end zone by himself. So this was a play response to Chuck's great play to Bones, and now Corey's able to respond right back to Juju, beating one of their better defenders in Randy to get into the end zone. Listen, these are two possible Hall of Fame quarterbacks. And yeah. they're giving us a show right now. Score for score for score for score. Chuck gets the ball back. He's going to throw the Slutty in the gap for a nice game and the first down. If you look here, Slutty beats BG in the gap. This is the Slutty I need. This is the Slutty I know. And this is Slutty that DG was able to pick in the draft. Great play by him there. Chuck then gets blitzed by Hole, who's blocked by Dirt. Throws the bones in the back of the end zone. The pass is low. Bobble, but still caught by Bones for the touchdown. Randy's going to get the two-point conversion. 23-14, DG scores right back. And I'm going to be the bad guy in this transaction here. And to, to say that, you said that this is a slutty I need, this is a slutty that they need, all of that. All of that is fine, Danny, I agree. But my thing is, this is what slutty does. We already know that this is what slutty does. That's not the issue. The only issue that we've been criticizing, you know, here and there, is his defense. But offense, this man is lights out. We know that already. 
Sometimes he makes a mistake here and there, but normally this is the slutty that you get on offense, and he's able to start the trend on them getting into the end zone, and which leads to Bones yet again getting the ball here, beating, I think that's Naquan he beats into the end zone, and he's able to bobble the ball and still come down with it. That's just Bones being Bones, and Chuck is able to utilize him in the way he wasn't able to last season, and that is their third touchdown so far. Sherm is going to get a, on the return, get a great return, past the 50, getting to the 40-yard line. Untouchable, untouchables get black, flag for blocking it back, but DG's going to decline it, which I thought was a little questionable, but they're going to decline it, give him at the 40, Kev with the block in the back. What do you think? Another play that they said was a horrible call. They went crazy, especially that captain. What do you think of the play? And I think that if you look here, this, there was a, several um, plays that could have been flagged here on their team. If you look here, this was a block in the back right here as the run is going on. And as you see here, I believe that that's Buck or don't, don't, don't quote me on this, but that's another player right here holding right here, holding on this play. So this is either blocking the back or holding, take your pick, but it's a definite flag on their special teams right here. So regardless of what you feel you're arguing about or whatever, but if they did it, they did it and they're guilty and these refs are not taking any chance, are not giving them any slack, they are throwing the flags and that's exactly what happened. Second down, Corey throws the juju on the sideline for a nice game, get him to the 10 yard line. Third down, Corey throws the short to shame who runs to the three yard line, untouchable saying he was tagged, Sherm said it was pity back. What do you think of the play? Listen, on this play, I believe that, yes, they were arguing about the pity pat, you know, and they said that, you know, well, I shouldn't have been a tag and yada, yada, yada. But if you look here, there's a reason why this was a pity pat in the first place, or you would say that that's what it is. That's because the defender is being held and prevented from making the tag in the first place. So what do you want for them to just get the tag there or to get flagged for holding now 10 yards back? I would take the play right there. Yes, he got tagged. Yes, he should have ran in the end zone, yada, yada, yada. But you're not getting a touchdown when there's a potential flag here. So I would take the tag right here and you have another down for your quarterback to get into the end zone. So they, have a, they still have a chance. There's not something you argue about here. We see multiple flags on this team for them playing undisciplined. And their captain is blaming the officials for them playing undisciplined. It's amazing to me. Now, are officials gonna blow calls? Absolutely, I've done it. Mm -hmm. But don't say, well, it's like when the guys say, well, why they call that many fouls on us and less fouls on this team? Because you fouled more. It's not because the rest got some type of bias issue. You're doing the mistakes and we're showing the mistakes. Anyway, we're gonna go to fourth and go. Fourth and goal, throw, Corey was gonna throw to Derek in the corner end zone. Caught by out of bounds, turnover on downs. The question is, was he out? This was one of the hardest calls to make. There's no challenges in the regular season. So you gotta go with the play, blink of the eye. What do you think of the call? And I believe that this was, this was what I would say is a possible close call here. Cause it looks like Derek's foot slides out of bounds. It doesn't look like he lifts his foot out of bounds. It looks like he slides out. So you have to see if the foot touched the ground before he goes out. And it looks like he could have possibly had his foot in before he slid out of bounds. So that play is a play that you know is a bang blank. That could have been a play that was missed there. That's unfortunate for them. But that play was called out of bounds there. Last play before half, Randy's going to throw it up. Incomplete. Take it into the half. 23-14. Now, this is my thing real quick. This DG team is playing lights out. Chuck scored three of three possessions. Now, there's three or four because the fourth possession, they just threw it up. But if it was a touchdown, they would have counted it. Mm -hmm. So they went three or four in the first half. That is great offensive attack. Last week, when I look at the numbers last week, DG in the first half last week went mm -hmm. all, of four, all four last week. So in the first half, they went all four. This week, they went three or four. Complete change. We chucked on two interceptions in the first half last week. So this is a complete turnaround. Way to change it on the offensive attack. On the other side, Corey has scored two out of three possessions. And the third one was a possible touchdown. That was a bang-bang play. But I think it should have been a touchdown. It was bang-bang. The foot slid up. 
And I think if we had challenges, you could see it. But it was missed. But at the end of the day, that's a part of the game. That's going to happen. And it's not the fact that officials make missed calls. It's going to happen. The question is, their defensive captain is arguing every single play. And it's starting to leak over on his teammates. He's starting to become a distraction on his teammates. And you got to look at it and say, hey, what are we going to do? But that's no excuse on the fact that you gave up 23 points in the first half. Yeah. That's what you should be yelling at. And two, two, two point conversions. Correct. So we got to see what happens in the second half. Second half, Corey gets the ball. Corey at the 48 long line. Those are Derek in the gap for a nice game and a first down. I like this guy, Derek. This yeah. guy's really, really good. Great play by him. And Corey is looking for him. Great play there. Second down, Corey finds Sherm cutting in the front of the end zone for the touchdown. If you look here, Sherm cooks Rob off of the line. And I'm sorry, Rob should not be on one-on-one -on -one with, 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 with Sherm. I wouldn't let Rob watch Sherm without help on the side. That's how I'm not going to be. I'm not going to be that harsh now. Listen, he, he got, got cooked. He got caught by surprise. Breaking. BG gets the two-point conversion. 23, 22. Listen. They get back in the game. Listen, on the red zone, all it takes is one quick move, and that's a touchdown play waiting to happen. So understand that red zone is very hard to guard, especially when you have some fast receivers being able to cut amongst each other back and forth. So Sherm is one of the fastest players on the field whenever he's on the field. So one quick move and Rob can't react. So that's just a defender getting beat. I'm not gonna kill Rob too much, but that doesn't help when you have one of their fastest guys able to react and um, react on a dime and you're not able to react in time. That's unfortunate for DG, but that's a score for untouchable. After getting the first down, Chuck throws a slide he on the sideline court, but only one foot inbounds incomplete. Second down, Chuck is blitzed by hole, blocked by Chulo. Throws the track in the middle, Avro misses him, track cuts outside, runs into the end zone for the touchdown, 29-22 DG. And I'm gonna say this real quick. We went through that play about um, about of Slutty catching the ball, but it was out of bounds. He argued the play, he was like, oh, why did y'all always do this to me as reps, whatever. But if you look, he does only get one foot in bounds. You know, this was a play that he wasn't in bounds. You see, he has one foot. Unfortunately, you have that rough guy. So um, rough J is right in the shot, so you don't see his foot land. But you clearly see one foot is in bounds. You see the line and you see Slutty sail over it. And that's why the, the, um, the ref um, um, says that he wasn't inbounds on that play. And that's why it ended up being incomplete. He argued it, but the ref is right there. He saw what happened. It didn't change the fact that Corey still able, I mean, that um, Chuck was still able to get to the, to the end zone. And look at this play here. He throws it to track in the middle of the midfield. Alvaro tries to make a tag. He's there, but he makes the tag before Alvaro, uh, before track catches the ball. So what does that mean? That's not a tag. So the play is still live. So right as he misses that right there, track is off to the races, running to the sideline in for the score. So that was not a missed call because Alvaro never tagged him. If you look here, he has his hands on him, but that's before the ball gets to him. That is not considered a tag here. And because of that, um, track is able to run all the way into the end zone for the score. He was upset. He said he made the tag. I just saw he didn't have the ball yet. He was frustrated with this, but we've seen him frustrated all day. After getting the first down, Corey's going to throw the buck in the gap, knocked away by Jalen incomplete. Corey would block him from Ricky. Throws a Derek in the gap for a nice game. Fourth and goal, Corey throws a shirt on the sideline. Can't hold on to it as he falls out incomplete. Turn off on down, giving the ball back to DG. Now this call again. <laughs> it was upset. Everything I'm bringing is from a breakdown at the end of the game. But, once again, they were, the Ricky acts, he was frustrated. Avido act, he was completely frustrated. Yeah. What happened here? First of all, the official said he didn't hold on into the ball. As you saw, the ball came out. Yeah. If you look after that, the ball never broke the plane anyway. It was nowhere near it. So the argument should have been, well, is the ball at the two going the other way, or are we bringing it back because of the catch? They argue the touchdown. Abdo, once again, frustrated, 
argued the touchdown. And it's not like we're picking on him because the guy's a, a, a champion in this league. So we're not going to disrespect him. The a guy won MVP, a champion, mind you. And won a championship MVP, yeah. unanimous. We both voted for him. Yeah. But he's bringing the attention to himself with his frustration and it's leaking onto the team because they started getting frustrated. All of them, the park was getting frustrated. But at the end of the day, he was wrong on this. He was wrong on several calls. And at the end of the day, Corey's not able to follow up Chuck's touchdown with a touchdown of his own and they get stopped. And they, they, they get stopped right in the red zone. They had an opportunity. Unfortunately, this was an inaccurate throw, a miscalculation on both the receiver, Sherm, and on, on um, Corey's part. This is a touchdown that they were already able to score early in the front in the front end zone in an earlier drive. So this was just a play that they missed. They were right there. They just got to close the deal, and they weren't able to do it on this drive here. DG gets the ball back. Chuck with three passes for a decent game, getting him to the, four, the 45 yard line. Fourth down, Chuck with blocking from Slutty here, runs for a short game. And the, and, and the first down, that is a huge play because that pretty much ice the game. Tell me about this play here. And this is if everybody, I'm going to show it to you before I even mention it. If you look at this play, what is this call? Everybody knows that this is the Carver play. This is the Carver play to get a touchdown. This is a Carver play to get the first down. This is always a part of a play that's always used either to end the game or to get a big score or a first down that they need to keep the drive going. But you know that they go back to this play over and over and over again. And who should know that? Ricky should know that, but he wasn't in this play, unfortunately. You know who else should know that? Alvaro, who was right there as the giver, who he himself got blocked by Slutty to give them an opportunity to get this play, make this play happen. All they needed to do was stop the first down here, and they have a shot to get into the end zone to probably put the game away for themselves. But Alvaro does not tell his offense to be aware of this play. They don't react in time, and Chuck is able to run towards the sideline for an easy first down here. DG is going to get tagged three times to kill the clock. Last play of the game, Chuck is going to throw it up. It's going to be picked off by Sherm. He's going to try to run, but it's going to get tagged after. End of the game, 29-22, DG. And the funny thing is, despite everything that happened in this game, this was still a close game because your offense was still putting up points. They kind of fell short on that last drive but your offense was efficient enough to keep you in the game. All you needed to do was focus on your defense, communicate with them, get a different game plan, whatever you got to do, make some switches, but they're not focusing on that because you have your captain worried about the officials on the sideline. You were worried about the wrong things, complaining that the refs are jerking you, that the refs are doing this, the refs are doing that. This is a disappointing loss for this untouchable team because they are right there. They are right there and they fall apart. And that's unfortunate watching them because they seem like a good team. There's a lot of people on their team I like. Obviously, Corey's a favorite among not only us, but a lot of people in the league. You have good receivers. You have Juju emerging as a great receiver on this team. You have Derek playing well both games, becoming a main target for Corey. You have Sherman, who's always exciting to watch. You have... Um, you have um, what? BG. You have BG, who's BG. So what else can I say about that? You have Ricky, who's always a mastermind on this team, able to help on both sides of the ball. You added you know? holes. You got yes. Andy. You got Buck. So and you got have... Adi, who's You got Slasher. You got Adi, who's the coach. Yes. Quarterback of the year, who's won two championships here. So this is a stacked team. By all intents and purposes, this is what they are. But they're not putting together on defense, and I think that that's going to make their – they're going to have a long season if they don't fix these mistakes and fix these issues because their offense is right there among the best of them already. By just one draft pick and a few pickups, they're yep. one of the best offenses in the league. So you're right there. Fix a few mistakes. That's all you got to do. Even your teammates – even the teammates said, we didn't lose because of the reps. It wasn't the rest for our defense suck. I heard that from multiple people on their team. So they already know what's the problem. They just got to fix it. That's it. This is what football is. 
You fix your mistakes and improve as you go along. And one thing I got to mention as well is that he was on the sideline calling players out and calling players in when Corey was setting up his offense. So you're ready to argue with your own quarterback that you drafted when he's calling in the offense. You want to make your quarterback comfortable calling the guys that he's ready to use. That's his offense. The quarterback is the captain of the offense. So you let him run your his offense. Now, if you telling people that, oh, I want this guy in, no, I want this guy in, oh, I said to throw them and put them in, all you're doing is undermining the quarterback. The quarterback is not trying to undermine you. You're doing the opposite. Let the quarterback be comfortable and make suggestions on who's going to come in, who's can work better if they're struggling. But you don't o- try to override the quarterback because that's going to make things uncomfortable for the quarterback. And I got to put that on the bad man, Adi. I'm putting that on him because he's a coach of his team. Yeah. His team in the offseason was set to, to pick up Pams as their coach. Pams was leaving DG to coach untouchables. It didn't work out. They decided to go in their own direction, which is probably to bring Adi. And it makes sense to me. But then Adi got to make these decisions and they know the only one that's going to do it it's me because I'm another top-level quarterback. I'm another quarterback that's won two championships here from the quarterback in position. So if only one that can stop Corey from doing certain things is me because I've been in that. Avalos yeah. never been a quarterback. Mm-hmm. So Avalos never been known for his offensive style. So he's not in a position to sit down and say, I want this guy in. Yeah. That is your quarterback's job. That is Adi's job. And I would even say, Another guy on the team that slashes job because he's another former offensive player of the year. So the quarterbacks, I understand, but for Abu to do was not play any defense, doesn't make sense to me. Because playoffs, there ain't gonna be no time to fix no mistakes. You can be one and done. And that's the worst way to go out knowing that you made all of these good pickups just for your season to be wasted on a one and done. So that's my that's my my last statement on that. DG looked like the team that we expected them to look like this game. Yeah. They picked it up from their last game with Chuck scoring three touchdowns in the second half. Um, Their first week of the season, so scoring three touchdowns in the first half this season. They upgraded on the offense. This team is dangerous. Defensively, they have to improve a little bit. I think they got a little more things to do. But if you remember, last week when they played Monarchs, they made Ramsey punt three times in the second half. Yeah. Something we've never heard of them doing. So this team is capable. They have to be considered a top team, especially the way Chuck played today. Slutty played a lot better. This game, Bones is the man. He's healthy. They got to yeah. hope he stay healthy. Track show made a lot of improvement. Hollywood wasn't here. But they upgraded their team, and this team should be definitely considered an elite team. This is a big win for them. Yeah. On the other side, Untouchables is at a crossroad right now. Avro is a very intelligent player when he's playing his game, but he has a tendency to get into make these outbursts. It's not the fact that we're picking on him because all we're doing is telling the truth and showing the video. Was that touchdown in the corner? Uh, 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 should have been that was called out of bounds, should have been a touchdown. Me and you both agree, yes, should have yeah. been, but it didn't happen. You got to understand, there's a lot of more football to play. He's thinking the officials are jerking him, but he's not. You got to understand, you're not pumping positivity to the rest of the team. And these guys may understand that. But Corey goes through that with his home team on YMM. Yeah. You think he's coming here to go through the same thing? It's different when I go through it with you or you go through it with me. Yeah. We're family. Corey's a part of that YMM core. But you're not going to sign up for that when you go to somebody else. And his own core guy saying that he is making too much, bringing too much attention to himself. So when you got veterans on this team, BG, Slasher, Buck, Ricky, they need to sit down and talk, and Adi, the coach, needs to sit down and let Avro know you're bringing bad attention to yourself, 
to the team and to the brand. Because that's all he did all day. Yeah. He was the talk of the park. This team is too talented to go through distractions. You want a distraction? You want to figure out what's going on? You need to figure out why your defense in two games have given up 53 points. Mm. That's what you should talk about. That's what you should focus on. 53 points in two games. What? What are we doing? You gave up 24 points to LES, and now you gave up 29 points to DG. What are we going to do? That's what we need to focus on. Not going on Instagram, not saying this. You can do what you want. None of this stuff is going to affect anybody else anymore. But you're turning everybody against you. The officials ain't going to listen to your yelling. Your team is going to get frustrated and not want you on the field. I know it's your team, but this is these players' time. And you have a championship team. He put together a great team. Yes. He put together a great team. Let off with this draft pick that he got controversy on for drafting Corey in the first round. And I think it was a great decision. Great I said decision. that right away. So you put the pieces there, but you're going to end up holding your team back. You didn't notice that proper play? You know this play. But you so caught up worrying about plays that happened three years ago, meaning three plays ago, to focus on what's happening here. You argued about calls that go showed you your team lacked discipline. It was holding, blocking the back. You argued these calls where you were wrong. And you argued the call about the play where you came short of the end zone. Mm -hmm. I'm just giving you facts. Yeah. Do I think this team is still elite? Absolutely. Do I still think it's a championship team? Absolutely. Do I think he has a mindset of putting the team together? Absolutely. He put up one of the top three teams in the league at talent. But if he keep making these distractions, that's all they're going to be known as, a talented team. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to wrap this one up with DG winning 29-22 over Untouchables. We'll be right back.